Welcome back, everybody. This is Joe Astorino, CCIE number 24347. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the VLAN trunking protocol, or VTP. Now, this is a very important topic with our layer 2 switching for uh, CCNA as well as CCNP. So, if you're working on your CCNA composite exam or your ICND2, you can gain a lot of a lot of valuable information from this video, and also you CCNP guys out there, uh, lots of different stuff. So some of this will be a little bit more advanced for you NP guys, but uh, a little more knowledge never hurt for the CCNA as well. So let's jump right into VTP. So what exactly is VTP? Let's talk about the base basics. Well, it's the VLAN trucking protocol, and really the point of it is to allow us to more easily manage all our VLANs in an enterprise network. So what it does is it allows us to add and remove VLANs in one central place on something called the VTP server and then all that information is then relayed down and synchronized to other switches we call VTP clients that are in the same VTP domain. So basically you set up all your switches you put them into a VTP domain Okay, and then on your VTP server, let's say you had a thousand VLANs in your network. Well, it would really suck to have to go to every single switch and add in a thousand VLANs. So with VTP, we could go to that server, add the VLANs once, and that server would then propagate the VLAN numbers, the VLAN names, everything down to, you know, possibly hundreds of different client switches, depending on uh, how you have it set up. So really it's a manage manageability protocol. Now VTP can run in three different modes. Very important exam stuff here. You can have server mode, client mode, or transparent mode. And we're going to talk a little bit about each one of those. So VTP server mode. If you're running in server mode, you can add and remove VLANs from the database. And changes that are made to that VLAN database when you make, uh, when you make a change on the VTP server, it's going to go ahead and propagate the information down to VTP clients. VTP client mode, the general rule there is that in client mode you cannot add or remove VLANs from the database. Okay, so a client basically listens to updates coming from the server. Server will send down updates, client listens to that information, updates his database based on that information. So the general rule for your exams is that a client cannot update the VLAN database. However, real world works a little bit different. Every time a server sends out a VTP update, something called the VTP revision number gets incremented. So in other words, it keeps counting higher and higher and higher every time an update goes out, so everyone can sync to that same number. Now with client mode, if you are running a switch in client mode and the VTP revision number happens to be higher than that of your server, it can overwrite the VLAN database on your server and all your other switches. So that's more real world. Very important that you check that in the real world. And that's why a lot of people uh, kind of frown on running VTP um, because of that uh, particular hole. Don't know if that's the way it was designed to work, probably not, but that's the way that it does work. So keep that in mind. Now transparent mode basically is a switch that is not participating in VTP. So if a server sends down a message and you're running in transparent mode, you're not going to take action on that, on that information. You will not update your VLAN database based on information from a server. Now you can relay that information on to other clients and you can go ahead and independently add and remove VLANs on that transparent mode switch that won't affect anyone else. So quick recap, server mode, when you add and remove things it gets propagated down to clients. So you can change the database and it affects everyone in the domain. Client mode, you cannot add and remove VLANs from the database generally. You're going to listen to updates from servers transparent mode you're basically not participating in VTP at all and uh, what happens on servers does not affect you you're completely independent now you still can change your own local 
VLAN database um, that does not affect anyone else. So those are your basic modes. Now VTP, different versions. You can run uh, version 1 or version 2. Technically version 3 is out there, but it's not really supported on most Cisco equipment. So you're generally limited to VTP version 1 and VTP version 2. Differences, not a whole lot there, but VTP version 2 does support token ring. Completely irrelevant since it's no longer on the exam. It's a little bit different in how it performs consistency checks with the information. So with version 2, it's a bit more efficient because it relies more on MD5 hashes uh, of the information instead of ch rechecking everything, like VTP version 1. And in version 2, transparent mode is supposed to work a little bit differently. We're going to talk a little bit about myth versus truth there here in a second. So myth versus truth. If you go, you read your uh, CCNA books, some of the information out there, the common myth is this. If you're running VTP version 1 in transparent mode, your switch will only forward frames if the VTP domain matches. However, if you're running VTP version 2 in transparent mode, the switch will forward all VTP frames even if the domain names don't match. That's the common myth out there. The truth is, if you lab it up in a lab on real equipment, on modern day switches, these versions work exactly the same. So version 1 and version 2, the way that it works is if the domain name is set to null, so you haven't set the domain name on your transparent switch, it will forward all frames regardless of whether you're running version 1 or version 2. If, however, the domain name is set to something other than null, then your domain has to match or VTP frames will be dropped. So there's really not a lot of truth anymore that version 2 goes ahead and forwards everything unless the domain name is null. So a little bit of myth versus truth and I would encourage you guys to lab this up in your own home labs and see for yourself on that one. Should go back here for a second. On the exam you probably want to answer more with the myth version. Okay that's the way it's still being taught that's the way it probably worked in older versions of code but just a heads up there, you may want to keep that in mind. And uh, if you get a question on that, answer the way that the book teaches. And you might want to jot down a note and leave feedback on the exam that uh, you've tested it and have observed it working a different way. Now, VTP troubleshooting. Some things that you need to know about. Your VTP domain name should definitely match. Now, if you're negotiating trunk links between your switches using DTP or the dynamic trunking protocol which happens to be the default so if you've got you know switch port mode dynamic desirable or switch port mode dynamic auto and you're running DTP if your VTP domain names do not match your trunk links will not come up so it's very important that your VTP domain names match now if your trunk links don't come up due to a VTP mismatch, you can get it to work by hard setting your uh, trunks to VTP mode trunk and turning off DTP with the switch port no negotiate. Second, VTP password. You can secure your updates using a VTP password. Obviously, those are going to have to match. VTP transparent mode, the next thing. If you want to use VLAN numbers that are greater than 1024, you must use VTP transparent mode. If you're running in server or client, you're not going to be able to utilize those VLANs. So very, very important there. Also, you never want to add a VTP client into your VTP domain before you make sure that the revision number is lower than that of your servers like we talked about before. So really the best practice, if you're adding a switch into a production network that does run VTP, I would recommend you go ahead and delete the VLAN database, which is in flash. So flash colon VLAN.dat. And you can delete that and then reload your switch. A couple different commands you can use if you run into problems. Debug SW-VLAN VTP events and debug SW VLAN VTP packets that'll show you a lot of different information about VTP. 
So that covers most of the basic information there, guys, on VTP. We're going to do a part two to this video where we actually jump in and configure it on real equipment. So watch out for that here uh, coming up soon. Again, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at jasterino. I post whenever I add a new blog to my site over at astorinonetworks.com and I uh, will update Twitter whenever I post new videos. Of course the blog is astorinonetworks.com and you guys are here on the YouTube channel Astorino Networks. Until next time guys keep studying hard and watch out for that VTP video uh, for configuration coming up here in a minute.